Let me ask you about Tom Perkins. Yeah. Because uh, you are part of the 1%. You are clearly a part of the 1%. Yeah. Tom Kirk Perkins came out with this, uh, with this letter uh, where he defended the 1%, and he said, look, we are being persecuted the same as the, Na as, as the Nazis uh, were persecuting the Jews. And, uh, you know, he was just lambasted, and he came on our network and defended it. How did you feel when you read that letter and, and when, you, when you heard his comment? I guess my feeling is that uh, he's right. Uh, the quote one percent are being pummeled uh, because it's politically convenient to do so. The problem is that the world and this country should not talk about envy of the one percent. It should talk about emulating the one percent. The one percent work harder. The work one percent are much bigger factors in all forms of our but society. Sam, tell that to tell that to the person who's on minimum wage who's living below the poverty line, that they should try to emulate the 1%. How are they going to get there? Oh, you know, there's, the, the, the stories are, are rampant of people who started with a candy store and took it from there. Uh, there are lots of people who have the ambition and have the motivation and have succeeded. I mean, lots of people have come from nowhere and become part of the 1%. But do you feel because you're rich that you're being persecuted? Uh, the word persecution is not the right word. Okay. You're I think, being picked on? I think that the politics of envy, the politics of class warfare, are what has separated America from many parts of the rest of the world. And we have benefited dramatically from not having class warfare, from not having envy. William Jennings Bryan in 1896 was the first person to run publicly in the United States on a platform of class warfare. He lost. And, you know, wisdom at the time said, this is not America. And I think it still is not America. Do you think, though, that there needs to be some help, though, or that, that there needs to be policy changes or something needs to be done about the growing income, income inequality, the growing gap? Do you think there needs to be something done with that? I think that that is a function of policies. And I think that overall, the policies that we passed for the last 50 years, whether it be unfunded Social Security or other issues, uh, have all contributed to this disparity. And we need to fix our government. We don't need 17,000 new pages of federal regulations in the last five years. So I think all of those things contribute to this disparity. And the more complicated our government makes our world, the more the 1% can afford to hire somebody to figure it out, and the other guy can't. But if you simplify government, neither one of them require. And therefore, the disparity slows down.